But we had some major rulings from the Supreme Court that I think were very good. <laughs> Two for religious freedom, a postal worker, I got my notes. Postal worker uh, got fired for wor not working on Sundays. Like they hired him, they knew he wasn't going to work Sundays because it was a religion. Uh, they uh, didn't make him for X number of years and they decided they kind of had enough and uh, said, you work on Sunday? No, we fire you. And uh, he, the Supreme Court found for him. I guess there's some wiggle room about making, uh, I don't want to say exactly a light because I don't understand all the nuances of it, but uh, Americans with Disability Act, the idea that you had to make accommodations for these religious beliefs unless it created this undue hardship, this financial, a big financial hardship. Well, it's hard to argue that uh, uh, the post office can't get people that would work on Sundays. And, uh, you know, the whole Sunday thing is only because uh, they committed to doing that to keep Amazon shipping, shipping through them. And uh, I have a feeling that's a big money loser for the post office anyway, but they wanted it and they got it. And now, you know, typically what happens a lot of days is a truck will come by like yesterday and just stops at my mailbox, and drops a package off, then goes. So they have another, it appears they have another truck out just to do Amazon packages. And that truck can uh, be there on Sunday too. And then in a separate truck, your mail actually gets delivered. So that doesn't, that doesn't seem too smart to me. So anyway, they decided for the postal worker. But that local branch of the post office, I'm not saying this came up way up above. It was, I think it was decided at the local level. Uh, they're still going to try to get them. They're, they're redefining the case to go after them. Then we have a web designer. And uh, they the Supreme Court found that she did not have to break her moral ethics, her religious beliefs, and publish uh, a website that was completely contrary to her religious beliefs. So that, that was a big win. And, uh, you know, they're still after the, the guy, the Christian guy that had bakery, right? I can't imagine he still does. He has to be in court all the time. But... Uh, the, uh, these people came from hours away just to order a cake at his bakery because they knew he was Christian, so this, this conflict would arise. Well, the Supreme Court, this was quite a while ago, decided in the cake person's uh, thing. And it's like, they're still going after him. Another case went up, and in, in this case, they all decided for the baker again, but they explicitly said, that the state of Colorado is prejudiced. So, I don't know. So they're still got, trying to get the Baker guy. Then another one, uh, which is a big deal, was race-based college admission. So, uh, kind of you could say like affirmative action type thing. Now, I think at one time that was okay to do, but I don't think that is now. I think it is uh, be racial discrimination now. And I guess, the, and I don't exactly know the logistics, how this works, but Asians were particularly discriminated against because of this quota system for, you know, African-Americans. You know, it wasn't, so say you have, you know, 18% is your quota you got to have for uh, African-Americans. So based solely on the skin color, you have to fill those 18 slots. So uh, then you have all those other slots. So, like I said, I don't understand how exactly it tended to uh, discriminate against Asians, but they, I assume they were thrown into the white group. It's kind of like this new thing is black and white. You're either black or you're white. And so if you're obviously not black, it doesn't matter anything else, you're still white. If you're Hispanic, you're not a... Yeah, Latino, you're white. If you're Asian, you're white. You know, so it's, I don't know, it's kind of bizarre. 
But anyway, uh, the Supreme Court struck that down, and uh, already they're weaseling out to try to find a way out of that. In other words, maybe say, oh, no, we're going to grant that that 18 percent to people who are economically disadvantaged with the idea of uh, hoping to pick out, be able to, you know, sort that appropriately so that you get mostly, uh, you know, blacks from the inner city or whatever people, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be that, you know, any white people would show up in that 18 percent. But it's ridiculous. And like I say, it was very discriminatory. And uh, I don't know. We have this tendency to try to inflate race-based things. And it's like we had the first non-white president, Barack Obama, and he was elected for two ter terms. So that's how high a non-white, you know, black person can rise. So it's like, that's the top. <laughs> you apply yourself, that's the top. So then the other one that was extremely important was the one ruling on social media. The uh, Supreme basically said that the White House colluded with uh, social media to stifle free speech. And they basically said, uh, your staff can no longer talk to these social media people. Cut it right off completely. And of course, Biden's like, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? So they're trying to figure out a way out around that. Because, you know, it's very important to stem uh, all this misinformation. And it's like, we don't know, we're starting to know now, we're far enough back away from it. We have a conservative Supreme Court, so, we're starting to find out a lot of the things that people said were conspiracy theories back then are actually true. <laughs> this limiting of free speech. And this didn't just go to uh, some nut job that, what was the, I forget the, the person that uh, had a big suit leveled after him. But uh, it isn't just, you know, like I say, this these conspiracy theory people that they censored, but they also censored a uh, high level epi, epi, let me try to think of this word, <laughs> epidemiologists, there we go, I got it out. They were, they discriminated, they cut their, uh, their ability to uh, post in social media. And it became the state's opinion or no opinion. And that's the Supreme Court basically has said, yeah, that's what happened. And now you're not going to do it anymore. And like I say, Biden, uh, he thinks it's the worst thing that could ever have happened. And it, you know, it is the worst thing that could ever happen with a president who wants to keep all the power of government within the executive branch. I mean, he's, uh, you know, face it. Some people think he's trying to be he's trying to be a king. It's like he end runs out around the laws. Uh, he he uh, doesn't follow any of the, he tells people not to follow any of the immigration laws and all of this stuff. So uh, I think this was a very good result that the government can no longer, the presidential branch can no longer go to the, you know, the then Twitter, it's different now. Elon Musk would just say, you know, get lost if someone approached him like that now. But uh they're no longer going to say to people, no, it's the government way or no way. You can, you know, you can praise what the government's doing, but we'll have no disagreement. Doesn't matter how many facts you have, doesn't matter your level of education. So that, I think that was a very good move. And um, so there we have it. Uh, some Supreme Court decisions that I think went exactly in the direction they were supposed to go. And uh, I think we're gonna see more of this as some of these more ridiculous cases come up. And uh, the idea that this wokeness in politics is really uh, uh, needs to be cut out. It's like a cancer uh, and we have to get rid of it. You know, 
presidents have increasingly ha grabbed more power as we've been going along. Every president's done it, you know, and uh, and no surprise, Biden's the current president, and he's the worst. And he's uh, following this idea of basically making, uh, wanting the judicial branch, you know, Biden wanted to pack the court so they could get a bunch of liberals on the court to overturn the conservatives. But that idea that he wanted to make the judicial branch subordinate to the uh, presidential branch and certainly to the uh, uh, Congress, the congressional branch too, and make sure that the that most of the power is seated in the president. And like I say, to be fair, that's been happening for a while, but, you know, uh, Biden is certainly, you know, going further in that direction. Tell me what you think. Bye. Thank you.